Climate Engine reports provide management-relevant climate and satellite-based vegetation data in succinct PDF and PNG reports to help to streamline data access to support monitoring, adaptive management, and planning activities. Currently, we provide two reports on site characterization and drought, and until recently have produced these reports only for select Bureau of Land Management land units. However, this month, we published two new tools to allow resource managers, analysts, and other users to produce these reports for any location in the lower 48 states with direct support for filtering by land ownership and management type for Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, and others. In this video, we will demonstrate these new tools and how you can use them to generate reports for your land units. You can find the new Climate Engine reporting tools at reports.climateengine.org. Using the drop-down menus for either drought or site characterization, select Generate Report. The tools function almost identically to one another, with a few differences which we will highlight during this video. For this demonstration, we'll focus on generating the site characterization reports, but the same principles will apply for the drought reports. It is also likely that we will publish additional types of reports in the future, which will function in largely the same way. We've previously published deep dive tutorial videos and articles for the site characterization and drought reports on the Climate Engine support website at support.climateengine.org. As a result, we will not cover the contents of the reports in detail in this video and refer to you to these resources to learn more about the maps, figures, and tables provided in the reports. Let's get started generating a site characterization report. From reports.climateengine.org, I will use the drop down menu under Site Characterization and select Generate Report. This will bring me to a page with a mapping interface on the left where we can select our area of interest for the report, and a form on the right where we can provide information about our area of interest and an email address to send the report to once it is completed. We'll use the mapping interface on the left to identify the area of interest that our report will be produced for. You'll notice that there are three options for identifying our area of interest. Priority Regions, Shapefile Upload, and Draw Polygon. Let's start with the Priority Regions. The Priority Regions are preloaded polygons that are included in the tool. Right now, we offer four types of Priority Regions, but these options may change through time. For this demonstration, I'm going to select a Huck 10 watershed. There are too many Huck 10 watersheds to display in the map when zoomed all the way out, so you'll need to zoom in to view them. I'm going to zoom in to southwestern Colorado, and I'm going to select the Yellow Jacket Canyon Huck 10, which encompasses much of Canyons of the Ancients National Monument. Notice that you can change your base map to satellite imagery if you want. You can also use the search icon to zoom to latitude longitude coordinates or to cities and other locations. Now that I've identified my area of interest, I need to fill out the form on the right side of the screen. The first thing that I need to do is provide an email address. The reason that we ask for an email address is because for large polygons, it often takes four to five minutes to query all of the data used to produce the reports. So providing the email address allows us to send an automated email with a link to the report once it's available. Next, you will need to provide a site name, site type, and site description, each of which can be used to add information to the top of the report as pictured in the pop-up menu. The next options involve selecting the types of land ownership and land cover to include in the report. You can use the Land Ownership Agency drop-down menu to only analyze certain land ownership types in the report. For example, I would select BLM in this example if I wanted to focus the reports on Bureau of Land Management managed lands and to exclude land that might be privately owned or managed by another federal or state agency. Next, I can use a checkbox to remove water cultivated crops and developed land. By default, we have this option checked because the vegetation data sets used in the reports are not well calibrated for these land cover types, so we encourage excluding them from the analysis. Once you've completed these steps, you can click Submit Request, which will kick off the process of generating the report. Like I said, it may take up to five minutes to produce the report, so you can either wait for the link on the page 
or leave the page and access the report from the email. Either way, you should receive an email, so check your junk or spam folder if you don't receive it. You can also close the window on the page and submit another report if you'd like. Once your report is ready, you'll receive an email from noreply at climateengine.org. The email will have a link to the zip folder with your report and links to the support documentation for the report you've produced. The report will be available at the link provided for seven days, so be sure and download it before then. Once you download the report, you can unzip it and you can see there are three folders and a readme file. The data folder has the underlying time series data used to produce the report. The images folder has the individual images compiled in the report. And the report folder has PDF and PNG versions of the report, which can be compiled into additional reports used in presentations or used in other activities. The readme file provides information about the data folder contents. This has been a summary of how to produce reports for priority regions. However, often you will want to identify your own area of interest, perhaps a wildfire fire perimeter, a sage-grouse habitat restoration project, or an area that experienced severe or prolonged drought. In those cases, you will want to upload your own shapefile. To get started using your own shapefile, select the shapefile upload option. You can either select all of the components of the shapefile individually, or provide a zipped shapefile. I like to use a zipped shapefile because it ensures that all of the components are, are included. For troubleshooting on using your shapefile, use the click here for shapefile guidance link. Click the choose files button to select your shapefile and once you do, it will be added to the map. You can use the drop down menu to select a field to filter by, or you can click the feature that you want to select on the map. Do note, there is a limit of 50,000 square kilometers on the size of polygon for which you can generate a report. This is a fairly large area, nearly the size of West Virginia, so will accommodate most polygons you would want to use. For my example, I have a shapefile of wildfires and will analyze the strawberry fire that burned in 2016 in Great Basin National Park. While the fire primarily burned within the park, it also eventually burned adjacent BLM lands as well. Now that I've selected the strawberry fire, I'll fill out the rest of the form, selecting NPS land ownership to ensure that my analysis only includes lands within Great Basin National Park. And I will click Submit Request. Again, the report will run and I'll be sent an email with a link to a zip file containing the same files as with the priority regions. Looking at the report, we can see the effects of the fire dramatically reduced the tree cover, increasing bare ground following the fire, and also increasing annual forb and grass cover, perennial forb and grass cover, and shrub cover. This has been a summary of how to use your own shapefile to generate a site characterization report. The same principles go for producing a drought report using a shapefile. The final option for defining your area of interest is to draw your own area of interest on a map in the app. To do this, select Draw Polygon. You can use the Pentagon icon in the map window to draw your area of interest. I'm going to zoom in to a location in Thunder Basin National Grassland in East Central Wyoming. And to orient to the landscape, I'll turn on the satellite imagery. I'll then draw a polygon using the instructions displayed on the page if I have any questions. Once I have completed my polygon, I will fill out the rest of the form, select none for land ownership type in this case, because I'm interested in all of the lands within my polygon, and then I'll submit the request. Similarly to the priority regions and shapefile upload, I will receive an email with a link to the zipped file with the report and the accompanying files. As I've mentioned, the Drought Reports tools function almost identically to the Site Characterization Reports tools demonstrated throughout this video, with only a few exceptions. Similarly, you can identify your area of interest using a priority region, shapefile upload, or drawing your own polygon. And the form on the right-hand side is identical. A couple of differences are that the Drought Reports can be produced for areas as large as 1 million square kilometers, which is roughly the combined area of Alaska, California, and Texas, and that we do not have the land cover mask checked by default for the drought reports. 
There's no need to necessarily apply the check mark for the land cover mask because the climate data that are inputs for the drought reports don't have the same sensitivities as the data sets used in the site characterization reports. Other than these details, the drought reports can be produced using the tools in exactly the same way we have demonstrated here for the site characterization reports. Thank you for joining me for this demonstration of the new climate engine tools for the site characterization and drought reports. You can find more information about the reports and learn how to perform more custom analysis using the Climate Engine app or API by visiting our support site at support.climateengine.org. If you have additional questions, please contact us through the support site. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.